it is in our DNA to be at the forefront of innovation. And the beauty of tomorrow will be powered by science, technology, and creativity. So, Asmita, thank you so much for, for joining us here at Cannes. How has your Cannes been so far? It's been fascinating. And the weather has been beautiful. Uh, with the breeze and the sun and the people, uh, it's, it's another good can. And so when you think about L'Oreal and, and, and the business you're in, what do you see as kind of some of the current, and I guess future marketing trends that are gonna impact your business? If we look at our consumer, our consumer is evolving continuously because they're adopting that technology. Yes. And, and uh, you know, more than that, uh, deep shifts which are societal, cultural, technological, they're shaping for us the future of beauty. And I'll share with you a, a few key themes, you know. Beauty has always been about self-expression, you know. Now we see that we are entering an era of extreme individuality and creativity from people. Then uh, sustainability, you know, there is a new eco expectation from our consumers and sustainability is the new value creation. The convergence of health, you know, science and technology is leading us towards hyper precision and personalization. And the continuous rise of digital platforms, which continue to rise, they are fueling creators and, and communities and the creator economy. So that is where the consumer is. And brands, I would say brands are responding with unbounded creativity. Yeah. So it's interesting, you, 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 you just referenced influencers there. And I, I think in your sector, in, 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 in the beauty world, it's there are some prominent influencers. How have you brought them into your marketing strategy? We are working very, very closely with influencers uh, as well as advocates of our brands. So these includes influencers, but also hairstylists, beauty advisors, dermatologists. So there's a whole host and group of people with whom we work with. We are quite ahead in terms of beauty influence. We measure and track that. We work with more than 50,000 influencers worldwide. Mm. So there's a shift from that influencer to creator that is happening. And we have been mastering that. For example, we've been mastering uh, platforms like TikTok, you know, and bringing in beauty and all the categories of beauty there with our brands like Maybelline, uh, NYX Professional Makeup, CeraVe, uh, who, who, uh, who kind of represent beauty yeah. in a very, very nice way there. I, I think the shift from social following to mm -hmm. greater and that shift, uh, the direction of shift continues yes. because there is more power to the people. Yeah, and in that sense, our brand, you know, we, we are moving with that direction of shift because our, our brand makes professional makeup, you know. So it is in the DNA of brand. It is a brand about makeup artistry, community, entertainment. So before, I mean, you know, when, when Instagram beauty started, Nick's professional makeup was one of the leaders in Instagram mm -hmm. beauty. Mm -hmm. Today, the brand has announced the first beauty DAO. It's a decentralized autonomous yeah. organization. It's called Gorgeous. It's about bringing those creators together, 3D artists, uh, fostering them in a place called Gorgeous, uh -huh. where they choose what they want to do. And just now, nine artists have created a collection of 4,000 pieces uh, about their interpretation of beauty. Yeah. And yes, that interpretation is on a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace like OpenSea. But the, the principle is that we are moving from influencers to creators. I mean, for, uh, for us, we say that uh, as a business, we, we have just published our quarter one results and we are doing quite well. You know, we are gaining market share uh, across zones and across divisions. And we say that the success of our business model, you know, it has about uh, a few pillars, about five or six pillars. Uh, the first one being RNI and disruptive innovation, product yeah. innovation. The second one being the portfolio of our brands. We have a portfolio of 36 global brands and many of them are mega brands like L'Oreal Paris, like Maybelline, Garnier, Lancome, Yves Saint Laurent Beauty. So with strong brand equities, yeah, that is the second pillar. The third pillar of success for us is our digital and beauty tech championship. Uh, the fourth one is the virtuous circle of uh, investment in ANP. We are strong believers in investing in our brands and we invest in them for, for a short-term sales, but also for long-term brand equity building. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, there is the manufacturing capability. And the last pillar for us is culture and values. It, in, it is in our DNA to be at the forefront of innovation. So actually, the innovation word again, I, I, it's, it's hard to um, talk innovation without talking about AI. And I can, it, it came up a little, and I guess it, it, it's part of beauty tech o, o, overall, but I, I'm really interested about how, how you're pushing into that space. Yeah, that's a fantastic question, a very broad one. I, I, I would take a step back, uh -huh. you know, and I'd try to share with you uh, our vision of the future of beauty. Okay. We have a vision of the future of beauty. We feel that uh, the beauty of tomorrow should, will be inclusive and generous. It will be good for the planet and for society. And the beauty of tomorrow will be powered by science, technology, and creativity. Yeah? And in that, we, we believe that technology will tackle sustainability and inclusivity challenges that is there in the world today that we call beauty for all. It will also cater to the infinite diversity of beauty needs and aspirations for each human being. And that we call beauty for each. So to us, we, we want to deliver beauty for all and beauty for each powered by beauty tech. And within that vision, you know, is a personalized beauty yes. using a lot of AI, uh, sustainable beauty, uh, inclusive beauty, or virtual beauty and the new codes of beauty that are coming. So we have been personalizing beauty. I mean, AI and data are, are very much part of our beauty tech ambition. We've yes. been using AI to, with personalized services. And I'll give you one uh, example of that, but we are using it for personalization of services. We are using it for product innovation and formulation. We are using AI in powering chatbots for our consumer care. We are using it to understand consumer preferences and trends, and even for demand sensing. And if I were to take just one example on personalization, uh, it is about uh, La Roche-Posay, a brand La Roche-Posay, which is mm -hmm. a dermatology beauty brand. And 80% of teenagers suffer from acne. Yeah. yeah. And also a lot of adults. Yeah. So what La Roche-Posay has done is it is bringing a service called Spot Scan. And Spot Scan is a skin diagnostic service, yeah, but based based on AI because it uses 50,000 images as okay. the base, uh, but also in collaboration with the dermatologist because we then put a acne severity score and from there on recommend routines or recommend them to a dermatologist. So this access to understanding your own skin, you know, right on your, on, on your laptop or your mobile phone, uh, it really broadens the access because the access of dermatologist is not even in all geographies across yes, the world. Yeah. So it brings a level of uh, inclusivity and, uh, and personalization uh, to our consumers through that. I love that. So, the, so the, if I get this right, the, the, the beauty for all is about the democratization and the beauty for each is in the personalization. Absolutely. Thank you for it. No, no, I like it. So I guess that it's interesting that the challenge with personalization is to do it at scale. So often you kind of have these kind of little initiatives, but to kind of get it across the business. So yeah. how, how do you achieve that? Yeah, we, we have a range of uh, innovations and services now, uh, which if you start looking at where they are, they, they, mm. are, they are rooted in our brands. Mm -hmm. So we have makeup virtual try-ons, hair color try-ons with a very good rendition in the, you know. We have skin diagnostic services. We are, we are evolving into coaching services and all. And all of that is available on our websites. Yeah, it is available on our e-retailer website. Yeah. And now we are also making big collaborations with partners like Microsoft. So first I'll say that when I say they are available on our websites, we have more than 800 services and about 40 million sessions of services have been done. And we have just announced, I mean, our latest collaboration with Microsoft, it would bring a little bit of color to everyone's Microsoft meetings yeah. because uh, ready in a click is what we've announced. Ready in a click is an innovation from our brand Mabel in New York. Uh -huh. And it basically brings a digital makeup bag, you know, to all Microsoft Teams users. Oh, wow. And they can 
at a click, choose one out of 12 different looks while they are interacting on Microsoft Teams. So like I said, we always had makeup virtual try-ons yeah, on our websites and on e-retailers uh, powered by Modiface, uh, our technology. But now it has the potential to bring these makeup virtual looks to almost 300 million Microsoft Teams users. I love, I love the ability to kind of like you decide this meeting is going to be fierce and you just change up the makeup click. Yeah. Absolutely, and because we believe that uh, that the future of beauty is physical, mm. digital, and virtual, and they they will all coexist. Yeah. Okay. So I'm it, this sort of future vision of of, of beauty obviously impacts um, the marketing piece. When you think about kind of I guess the marketeer or, or the modern CMO in, in in your category, what do they now need to kind of be an expert of because it's obviously more than just simply just product and price. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, of course, the uh, I, a bit of what we started the yeah. discussion with, you know, the, the technology is moving, you know, and it's moving quite fast across different dimensions. Consumers are evolving. And, and then there is the brands and the brand equity and the brand building. Within, uh, within the manifesto of each of these brands. I think the role of the CMO is, is at the convergence of that technology, consumer and brands, you know, driving short-term sales and building long-term brand equities. I love it. The, the, the focus on both the short and the long-term, massively yeah. important. Yeah, massively important. So obviously in the marketing space, uh, lots of conversation around sustainability. I, 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 there are definitely some brands that maybe uh, uh, venture into greenwashing <laughs> and virtue signaling. So I'm, I'm always interested to understand as a marketeer how you talk about sustainability, but, but in an authentic and genuine way. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, L'Oreal connects with uh, billions of consumers all around the world. And uh, uh, we have to establish these connections responsibly. So, so in a sense and very simply, that is the effort that we want to do, you know. And we do it through our brands, we do it through beauty tech, we do it through partnerships. Uh, I'm going to take one example of each one of them, mm -hmm. yeah. So when I speak about beauty tech, uh, uh, we, we have uh, innovated a product called Water Saver. Yeah? It is a partnership between L'Oreal Professional, our professional products brand, and a Swiss startup, Gyoza. And what they are doing is they're, they're bringing a new uh, technology of water fragmentation so that the water uh, used at the salon reduces. So it's a 69% less water used at the salon. And we are scaling that to more and more salons all across the world because in the professional business, uh, a lot of stylists and consumers are there and they're using water within. So that is a beauty tech innovation and, and we, we are very proud of it. Now, when we talk about our brands, our brand Garnier, Mm -hmm. uh, commits to green beauty for all of us across its uh, whole value chain, whether it is about, uh, uh, you know, uh, our factories being sustainable, you know, so two thirds of our factories are sustainable today globally at a group level and in Garnier within that, uh, whether it is about product innovation. So there is a, uh, there's an innovation around uh, rinse free conditioner where you don't need to use water, it's a dry conditioner, uh, whether it is about communication to consumers and so that encouraging consumer behavior, uh, you know, in the right way or giving transparency to consumers on product impact labeling, that this, this is what is, you know, the impact of the product that you're going to use. I, it's fascinating. It, it, it seems that it's, the same, it's, it's more than just a, a, a marketing message for you. It, it is about how you do yeah. business sustainably. Yeah. Yeah. We would like to try. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>